Coming up on today's show, we're going to have a little news and rumors discussion. That's on Traveling with the Mouse. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our annual open house. Oh, wait, no. I'm sorry, that's the wrong line. Welcome to episode number 344 of Traveling with the Mouse. You don't know that line? It's from your favorite attraction. Oh, okay. Think your favorite attraction and Epcot. Yes. You don't know that? I guess I block it out. Then again, I could be using the line from the old version. Not the original, but the one they changed it to for like two months. (laughs) Before they they changed it again. I can't remember. I did get to see that version. I Mm -hmm. haven't. Introduce me. (laughs) I was going to get to that. I think people know who you are. Anyway, I... After all that, I am your host this week. <laughs> My name is John. And the guy you've been, this been interacting, you've been talking with, or we've been talking with, his name is Adam. I look real good today. Uh, What's okay. up, everybody? <laughs> I don't know where that one comes from <laughs> at all. Is that a Disney reference? No. Well, kind of, in a roundabout way. Okay. It's a and Apple commercial reference. And as far as we know, Jason is not joining us this week, unless he just happens to pop in. But as of right <laughs> he's, now, he's not here. He's been known to pop out at parties. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from either, but... <laughs> from I Love Lucy. Oh, oh, oh. You okay. pop out at parties. Are you uh, on Popular? Okay. Vita Vita Vegemin. That's what he's on right now. Ah. That's a really old reference for all you young people out there. <laughs> Yeah, it's even older than you. <laughs> but that's also a Hollywood Studios reference because you used to could do that. What do you mean you used to could do that? Oh, you yes, that's could right. You could do the candy thing anyway. That, that's right. You could. Long time ago. I almost forgot. So there you have it. Look at me with all these obscure Disney references today. I forgot. I turned it off. <laughs> it's a Star Wars reference. Yeah. Speaking of Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, that's, good. that's a good segue, right? Some of us have been keeping up with the Book of Boba Fett, mm-hmm. which we haven't really discussed on this show in a while. We've been doing trip reports for the last, like, three weeks. Right. Although the uh, last two episodes were Book of Mandalorian, I think. But <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Boba Fett's made 20 seconds of screen time in the last two episodes, but yeah. Right. Well, we can start off on this by saying... Yeah. Oh, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, well, we could say there could be some spoilers in there if you haven't watched any of the episodes so There'll far. There'll be some spoilers. <laughs> How yeah, do you talk about it possible. without... <laughs> Yeah, so disclaimer Yeah. Uh, in this section. What I was going to say in the beginning is this has been a series that has had some criticism, particularly yeah. involving Boba Fett himself yeah. and what they've done with his character, which I kind of get. I mean, I do get that. Nobody's bad anymore. Everybody's morally complex. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just right. boy, they're kind of rewriting people. I think once you get deeper into somebody's story... The less people like that because they took some of the mystery maybe out of the character or something. It's possible. But I I don't agree with any of the criticism about it. I thought Boca Boba Fett was great before the last two episodes. And uh, it's even better since, so. Well, I'm not going to say there's not something to the criticism of what they've done with this character. But I still find the show entertaining. So it has held my interest for the most part. What I... What I think is kind of weird, though, is through the first, like, four episodes, we see some of the present, but it's like half of it's been stuff that's he's reminiscing about, apparently. that only the, Apparently, these visions of his past only go to what happened not long before he was found. <laughs> um, yeah. Or before we found him in Mandalorian, anyway. Appar- apparently, that's what he thinks about in, while he's healing in the, uh, what was it called again? A bath um, tank, yeah. Bath tank, that's right. Same that's right. thing that Luke used in Empire Strikes Back. Vader yeah. used frequently, of course. How come we never see what they were thinking about then? You know, <laughs> someone needs to go well, back and do that. In Empire Strikes Back, let's see what Luke was thinking about when he was in. Yeah. yeah. Well, what was what part of Luke's past was he dreaming about whenever he was in a bath tank? Yeah, it'd be interesting. Maybe they'll make a series about that. <laughs> Disney Plus coming. Okay. 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 You said when was Vader in one? He was in one, I believe, in Rogue One. Rogue One? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't know. When he was on Mustafar. Oh. I believe he was in one. Okay. 
So apparently this thing makes you reminisce about your past as part of your healing process. <laughs> but not the really, in Boba Fett's case, not really like far back in his past, just to, you know, like last, like, I don't know, five years or something. No, not even that long because it was after yeah. it was after Jedi. So the last few months of his life, he reminisces about. But anyway, a lot of, what's the word, fan service is the way we've called it, that gets put into these John Favreau yep. Star Wars. He does it in a way, though, that's more appealing, I think. I feel like if he continues down this whole Clint Eastwood meets Star Wars road, though, that people are going to start think, saying he's he's being kind of, he's overdoing it if he keeps going. Yeah, I would say this, the episode six, to me, the scene with Cad Bane was... Spoiler. Oh, sorry, <laughs> excuse me. For all you... Because, again, I had no clue who that character was because I didn't watch all of Clone Wars or... Like comics, which apparently he's in a lot of those as well. But anyway, that character. Well, yeah, I knew him from Clone Wars, but that's the only place I knew him from because that's the only yeah. place I'd seen him show up. Yeah, so he was completely new character to me. So I'm like, who is this guy who's sounds like the guy from Westworld in there? <laughs> so I mean, it was a very Western, Old West kind of showdown duel thing. But well, well, he is. Uh, he's not. The actor in the suit or whatever it is wearing the mask is not Corey Burton, but Corey Burton does voice him. Yeah, as he did in the Clone Wars, right? So. Which was cool. The character, the voice, I could tell was distinct, so I knew that it had to be a character. So I had to actually look him up. But yeah, interesting. The scene itself, though, I was kind of like, okay, this is way too like old west. But again, a lot of Mandalorian was kind of based on an old west kind of vibe well, like Space I said, even cowboys the, or cowboys versus yeah. aliens kind of thing even the theme sounds like it would be in a clint eastwood movie sort of yeah yeah it does <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> true you know yeah which again it's kind of like a space western in a way which i i, I understand that but uh, you know most of the time it's kind of you can feel it's in an era that's post jedi most of the time yeah now okay it just speaking of Jedi, it made me think of. I've heard some people online say, and again, this is huge spoilers stuff. The pl- in episode six of this show, Luke on the planet with Grogu. Some of the people I've heard talk about it thought it was indoor again, but I'm like, because they thought they heard Ewoks when the sh- ship was landing and when mm. Mando came in. I don't like, remember that. I didn't hear that either, but. And I'm like, it didn't look like indoor to me. I felt like they could have made it look a whole lot more like indoor if they really wanted you to think it was indoor. So, so I have no clue what this this planet was to me. It didn't, I don't know. Did you think it was indoor? <laughs> didn't scream indoor to me. No, actually, what I was thinking, you know, that temple they were building looks exactly like it's going to be the temple that's on, what is it, he's, where is it he is on uh and when they what? find him in Last Jedi, Last Jedi, yeah. Only that doesn't look near as remote enough as far as like it doesn't like it's an island, like it's an island or anything, right? That's the only problem. Well, of course, when they're those little androids, I think they're called, were building the building the temple. Yes. I was like, oh, is this the one that Kylo destroys? Yeah, that probably is. Could are, be. Are we gonna get? Yeah. Are we gonna get to that point eventually? <laughs> if this. Season twelve of Mandalorian. If this series goes on long enough, it might it might jump ahead a few, you know. Right. It might well, it might start getting like lost or something. <laughs> it could. Oh Lord, if it ends like lost though, we're in trouble. <laughs> but that leads to another thing I was thinking of, which yeah, the deep fake. The mm-hmm. that guy that they hired from YouTube. We talked about this a few months ago on the podcast on the show here, that they had hired this YouTuber who did better deep fake than the season two final episode of Mandalorian on right. Luke. And I got to say, this one looked really good. I mean, it wasn't perfect as far as like, it didn't look exactly like Mark Hamill in Return of the Jedi, but it was pretty darn close for being 40 yeah. years later. <laughs> like That's pretty dang good. Oh for, yeah. I mean, uh, it's, I don't know. I that I, I thought it was good enough to like, you know, they could yeah. do this with just about anybody. That's yeah, what I was thinking. I'm like, it did not take me out of the story at all. No, no, no. Yeah, it, it in was fact completely made me believable. Excited. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. It is completely I, believable. Exactly. Uh, it does make more sense that uh, what Luke's saying about Grogu, like how he's already been through training to some degree, is how he knows how to do some of the stuff he has. He's just kind of forgotten. Like he's just really yeah. accessing his memory. He's like bringing it back to him. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think one of the best scenes of that episode two was, sorry, not episode two, episode also, (laughs) was Grogu's flashback to uh, Order 66, where there were three Jedis, I guess, protecting him, and they were all all three killed. So it kind of makes you wonder, was Grogu captured there? Was he actually, like, right there behind them? Did they think he was not you know, a Jedi youngling or something and let, let him go or something, you know. How did he get out of that little situation and survive Order 66? Curious. Yeah. But it was interesting to see that, okay, he, he did survive that. He was around. Now the question to me is, is he Yoda and Yadel's, like, son? <laughs> I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I mean... They're the same species. That's the only three of that species that we know exist, so why wouldn't it's it be? It's the only we've seen. I mean, Yoda can have younglings at 800 years old. Do we even know how this species comes to be? I mean, we, we don't even know how they <laughs> come how about. They, well, Because there's so few of them, apparently. We know that Yoda was, I guess, a male, and Yadel was a female, so... And apparently the this species is automatically strong with the Force. Right. No matter what. Like, they have high like midichlorian count. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> keeping that in the story. Right. Ex- with the exception of uh, Anakin, his was higher than Yoda's. Right. <laughs> Makes you wonder, did Luke have higher than Yoda? Ah, no one, ever met, no one ever tested his blood that we saw. Yeah, we never saw. Yeah. They, sh- they should have done that before he died. Like father, yeah. like son. It's like, let's test your midichlorian count. No. Yeah. Uh, anyway. All right. That's yeah. enough about Book of Boba Fett, I think, for right now. Unless you have something else you want to add to um, All I would say is I'm really looking forward to the next one because, and the future. Because I think you can do just about anything with this technology they're using for deepfake for Luke, I, I think you could bring Han back. You could bring Leia back. You could bring other characters if you wanted to from any time period of the Star Wars universe. So I think it really opens up a whole lot of possibilities. And of course, I'm extremely excited about the Obi Wan series because I think that's going to be like even better than these last two episodes have been. So, ah. I'm so excited. you think they're gonna you think they're gonna bring back Sir Alec Guinness version of Obi Wan at some point? They could deep fake <laughs> if they have permission from his estate. I imagine they yeah. could. Yeah, if his estate offers a good price. Because I feel like Carrie Fisher gave permission for Rogue One, so I don't know if that's like. Well, she was alive at the time. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Is does that mean that that's for any like they could do it again, or yeah, I don't know. right? You know, because they also did do it. In Rise of Skywalker, they also did her likeness there. Remember, they had a flashback with her and Luke training or oh. something. Oh, yeah. It's so, been so long. Right. So I imagine they have permission to do hers. And we were talking before the show about Harrison Ford. Would he ever give permission You know, for his likeness? I'm sure it would and cost we were, them. Yeah, but we were discussing would they, ever, would they ever want to pay the price for his likeness. Right. Cost them like <laughs> 20 million bucks just to have him. Yeah. Up here, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited about it. These last two episodes, like I said, have made me like the show even more. But Book of Boba Fett I thought was good all throughout. There was a few weak moments in the first four episodes, but for the most part, I liked it. I thought it was cool, you know. And Star Wars, no character ever really dies, so you can always bring somebody back. I thought Boba Fett's story was more believable than Darth Maul surviving, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could being cut in half versus being in a slowly digesting uh Speaking of uh Darth Sarlacc. Maul, it's it's been a while since they teased his return in the live action movies, at least anyway, and then they uh right. have totally they dropped him so back. far. 
Right. Yeah, they teased it at the end of Solo. I guess maybe because of how poorly Solo did at the box office, maybe, is what they... Could have been. But also the timeline, Solo was before New Hope, and so this is after Return of the Jedi. Is is Maul still alive by then, or didn't... What's her name from Solo? She took over the syndicate and all that. I forgot her name. See, I think what some fans are really... They didn't consider is part of what made these characters that they liked cool was the fact that they their stories ended when they did. <laughs> yeah. And now people have tried to resurrect them, and it's not quite the same. They don't have quite the same feelings for them. And I'm not saying that, like I said, like I was talking about Book of Boba Fett, it's entertaining, but again, I could see I can see the argument that they're ruining his character. I mean, I could see that argument. Anyway. All right, um, moving on. So, yeah, we talked about that for a little little longer than usually we would. Nah, so, it was, uh, it's, we haven't talked about really any of it, have we? No, like I said, we've done trip reports for yeah. the last three episodes because yeah. we've so had we them, which it. is a good thing to do. We've good thing we've had them. Yeah, because you know the parks are the biggest portion of our topics, I guess, yeah. of this show. Right. So, True. but um, just before we transition out of it, mm. we don't talk about Bruno is actually number one on the billboards. Yes. <laughs> Has right. that ever happened? Like So, yeah, I looked that up. It was the first time since 1993 when A Whole New World was number one for a week. Ah, uh, and that was and, probably the Peebo Bryson and what's her name? Who was the one that who else sung that one with, the, with him yeah. in that one? That was probably that version. Mm-hmm. Probably. But, yeah, that was the last time a number one song from a Disney animated film was on the billboard at number one. And, of course, it's a great soundtrack. Everybody, my family anyway, that's all they want to hear right now. <laughs> oh, the so, kids? Oh, yes, the kids. And I do, yeah. too. I love I love the It's a great soundtrack. It really is. Well, the first so. one that obviously caught my ear as far as being real catchy was We Don't Talk About Bruno <laughs> whenever we watched that. And, it was a, and yeah. interestingly enough, that's the one that everybody sings and knows. I like. I pretty much know the whole thing now. So... Yeah. But I mean, it's got a lot of good songs. Mm hmm. Anyway, so I just thought I'd That's throw cool. that one in there since we didn't discuss that. We've seen that the railroad has been at least uncovered and might be coming back soon. I How soon, so. we don't know yet. I don't think they've finished laying all the new track yet over by the Storybook Circus area. Well, they're at least getting it ready. So that's yeah. a good sign. I feel like the railroad will open before Tron, which is a good thing. I mean, we need that. This <laughs> well, let's hope so. Because <laughs> Tron will not, maybe this year. I mean, what do you think, Tron? I mean, they still haven't said. Do you think it'll be this year, or are they going to try to push it to, like, spring 2023? I don't know. I... I'm i thinking if it's going to be this year, it might be holiday season <laughs> this year. Yeah. That's my thinking. I mean, it sure um, looks like they could get it open by the fall. Yeah. But I don't know. They might, I mean, they they had so many plans for the 50th that just haven't panned out. Right. As far as attractions go. Yeah. And now, I, maybe they need to space this stuff out. Truthfully, it might be more beneficial for holding it for when they need it. Right. Kind of like they did with Ratatouille. Right. They held it a little longer than, to than kinda, necessary. Right. Yeah. Because Guardians will be a big draw, and we know it will open in the summer. Right. So do they need to have another headliner in the summer, wait till the fall, you know, wait for Christmas? I don't know. They don't really need that for Christmas either. Yeah. But I imagine they'll have to do some testing, right, for a certain period of time as well for the actual ride, which isn't even ready to be testing yet. Right. I feel like there is a possibility, and I could be wrong, because, you know, they usually try to keep thing or get things to be like people eaters for when they think they're going to be a little busier. Yeah. Which, it seems like they're busy all the time right now. I mean, January, especially around MLK, was busier than usual. Yeah. Even for a typical January, right. or even a typical holiday weekend in January. Mm. So spring break coming up around the corner i'm wondering if maybe they're considering getting railroad ready for that even if it could be done that soon Hmm. we know it's only a matter of weeks but i mean it would be something that keeps people like i said a people eater of sorts yeah keep it'd be one more attraction where people could go right so no i would i i sooner the better yeah i really do wonder this new section where the tron area is 
is it going to look weird to have a railroad going right underneath <laughs> this track? Uh, I know they're supposedly building a tunnel, but it can't, doesn't look like it's going to be the entire length of you know where Tron is. So I feel like the railroad was pretty well hidden before, right, in Tomorrowland. I never really noticed yeah. it from Tomorrowland. Not much. Only between like the Barnstormer area and uh, before you got to Space Mountain, back when that was the smoking area. <laughs> You can yeah, see. and I was go- yeah, but two. But when when was the main time you could see that when you were on the cars? Yeah, I mean, or walking that path. Yeah, that path. Yeah, that was about it. Yeah, you'd hear it. Yeah, yeah I, I've never felt like the illusion was real. But they don't even. But here's the thing: uh, do, nowadays, do they even really care about keeping up the illusion most of the time? No, doesn't seem like it. Yeah, I mean, point. have you ever really just looked around and said, look how, how much of the backside of Galaxy's Edge you can see from outside of the park at certain places? Right. Yeah, or how much of the back, Yeah, or how much of the backside of Pandora you can see from outside of the park? Yeah, good point. I mean, it's like they don't even try to hide certain things anymore. Yeah, not in the Chapek era for sure. The big blue building? I mean, it, right. yeah, I guess it's the same color of the sky, but it's still, you can tell something's different. Well, it is a big blue world, so... Ah, yes. It's got big blue buildings in it. And then, of course, there's the Harmonious Barges, which, because the show is good, I guess people have forgiven that one. <laughs> right. So, we have but forgotten about that. I guess I, one of the old ones is, you know, you can see the contemporary from Liberty Square, depending on where you're standing, so it's kind of... Yeah, that's true. That depends, but... You can also see Tron from Fantasyland now, so... Yeah. But whatever. You know, doesn't matter and anymore. Having contemporary being seen from Tomorrowland was perfect. Right. Well, yeah. it was intentional I, back in the day, I know. At least it All fits. Right. And as we mentioned, talking about th- newer things, one that we know is going to be open later this summer. We don't have a specific time frame just yet, but Guardians of the Galaxy... Yeah. Uh, Cosmic rewind. Cosmic rewind. Yeah, I had try, I said I had rewind, but I was like, "What was the first word?" Cosmic rewind. Yeah, it should be opening. We just know summer right now, so it could be July. Yeah. It could be Memorial Day weekend. I mean, for all we know, we'll know probably soon. Well, they're probably going to get more specific soon. So, but yeah, that Nova Corps Star Blaster thing is like come up so quick. Yeah, it's that was like it's at the front. A couple of days, and it's like that thing is already there. So, you know, I've heard quite Pretty a cool. few people look at the Guardians area that they can see, and they think it's still a ways away. But I'm like, what they forget is that that's just the exterior. That's just the entrance to the show building that you're looking right. at right there. That's not really a whole lot of work to be done with that. That could be done pretty yeah. quick. It's what's yeah. been done inside this the main part, and I'm pretty yeah. sure that's for the most part finished. Yeah, inside the big blue yeah. building, big giant right building. that we talked about just a second ago. Right. Yeah, they've probably been testing this ride already. I'm sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like they have too. And they've released many months ago that picture of inside the building, and wasn't there a train on the track? I think so. I think yeah. So yeah, I think or they've a, been testing a this ride for a while. vehicle. Yes, sure. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Sure. When I think of train on the track. Yeah, yeah it's okay. You, back to our last story of the <laughs> railroad. Anyway. But yeah. yeah. And hopefully there will be an, a pass holder preview hmm? at some maybe. point. That maybe. Maybe. We can, be nice. maybe we can sneak in there. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah maybe because you know that. there'll be a virtual queue uh, after. Uh. Maybe they'll do it like Ratatouille though because they gave it a whole month of previews for Ratatouille for this if they did the same thing that would be great you could just book your little time window to go in and ride it and yeah that was awesome so yeah hopefully they do that you know I got to thinking though when you mentioned the word boarding group you know how they did boarding group for Ratatouille not anywhere near as long as they did it for Rise before they dropped it yeah and they and they they basically say put it on pause is what they call it but for ratatouille one thing that they were doing is once genie plus was released they were doing the boarding group and the individual lightning link and now it's of course just the individual lightning link but got to thinking about the process and i'm like okay let's just especially with rise even though it's lightning lane now you still have to get up at seven it's still usually gone within a few minutes yeah 
Only difference is this time you're paying extra to do so. I mean, it's not, <laughs> nothing's really changed. You're right. still buying, and, well, except for the fact that you also have the option of waiting in line on top right. of that. Yeah, you can wait. That's the only real difference. It's not an only boarding group. It's not boarding right. group. So. Do you think guard, guardians will have to be boarding group only, right, for... Or like I individual. Like, well, I was you know gonna I mean? say no. I don't think they're gonna ever get away from not having someone pay to get on there. Yeah, yeah. It's but I meant like, like as far as if you didn't want to pay, the only choice would be boarding group for boarding a while. group. Uh, probably for the initial, probably. Most Since, likely. Even though it was kind of not necessary for Ratatouille. I mean, don't get me wrong. Ratatouille is a decent attraction, but it's not anywhere on the same level as Rise, obviously. Yeah. But. If they do that, here's what we think Epcot's going to look like, right? It's still going to be Ratatouille. They'll still have their lightning lane. They'll probably take it away from Frozen, don't you think? If they're yeah. just going to do two. Yeah, I guess they would. And Most not likely. to mention, right now, technically, they're not being as advertised with their lightning lanes at Animal Kingdom, at least, because the, they took their other individual lightning lane down and did not put it somewhere else in the time frame. Yeah. So technically, there is not a two per park. There's only one at Animal Kingdom. Until Everest comes back. Right. So. I think it would be smart, though, if they put Ratatouille off of the Lightning Lane. You think so? I think Frozen needs it more. Even though well, it's just the newest attraction, I think they'll leave it at that. But, you know, Frozen, yeah, I think, needs it more. There's a couple of arguments at Epcot. You could argue that Test Track needs it. Right. Which it probably yeah. does. <laughs> yeah. Soren not so much anymore, especially since they added capacity here a little while back. Yeah. And as we heard from James, uh, your brother, last week, if you wait and like eat dinner at Sunshine Seasons and wait for close to fireworks time, you'd probably walk just about right on. Sorry. Right, yeah, if you're if you're not interested in seeing yeah, Harmonious. Harmonious, yeah. yeah you could just, just go right on Soarin'. Yeah, and that makes total sense. There's that quite a few attractions, out. if you notice. Dining is more popular around fireworks time as well, as far as like... I say more yeah. popular. Like, there's more open, there's more availability around fireworks time. Yeah. Because, obviously, people want to see the fireworks. Yeah. If you don't have a good view of it, like, yeah. uh, certain ones do. Yeah. Yeah. I see. So, that's Guardians. Mm-hmm. Well, there's one that I came across that it keeps happening is the Skyliner Epcot closed suddenly. Was that today? That was today as we're recording this. Even after this refurbishment epcot line is the one that frequently goes down if it if there's any issue with the skyliner it tends to always be the epcot line which is the more complicated it's the longer stretch yeah it's got the turn station it's also well, it's technically got two turn stations because of the riviera and mm. the one near boardwalk depends so. on where you're traveling from and to because right. if you're traveling you know Let's say if you're coming all the way from Art of Animation, you got to get off at Caribbean. Yeah. Then you got to go to the Riviera, which is technically a turn station since you're not getting off there. Right. Mm-hmm. But then, of course, if you're starting at Riviera, though, you only have the one turn station. technically. Sure. But, but technically, that line has two turn stations, and it's the more complex of the Skyliner routes, obviously, by far. But they keep having so many issues with that line, and it makes me wonder, like what the problem is because even when i was there back in december it closed for half the day the epcot line and i had to take the boat to get to hollywood studios and that was slow so i haven't had it be down any of the times that i've been there thus far i've just noticed that anytime there's issues it tends to be the epcot line which of course makes sense it's the like we just talked about but i don't know i wonder what the problems are and why it keeps having issues but yeah who knows Again, well, don't you want to talk about the Wish being delayed? Yes. The Disney Wish was originally scheduled to set sail. What was the date it was originally set sail? It was June, June the 9th. 9th. That's right. Yeah, yeah, June 9th. And it's now been delayed to July the 14th. I guess it's not quite going to be. They've been seen enough to know that it's not quite going to be ready to go by June the 9th. And thus have that's gonna affect well a few sailings really. Guest books for the maiden voyage are gonna auto be auto booked onto the the new sailing, but of course the sail dates in between are gonna be affected. So we don't right. know exactly at this point in time what's gonna happen with those. Other than we do know that they have given the initial ones 
half price, I think it is. So for on that a maiden voyage. So if I had Which, known that makes it about regular price for any of the other cruises. <laughs> <Pretty> <laughs> good. Somewhat close. But, yeah, I was gonna say if I'd have known that was gonna happen, I would have at least put my deposit down. I mean, come on. Yeah. Right. Because that the initial good. sailing was pretty expensive. Yeah, and so, I uh, saw the prices were like uh, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser prices. Yeah. <laughs> for a longer cruise, but anyway. Speaking of the Galactic Star Cruiser, we had a couple mm-hmm. of stories about that while we were there away. There was, yeah. Disney World has been seeking actors and singers yeah. for the Star Cruiser. This was a couple Try weeks back, so this could still be open. They have online submissions if you want mm-hmm. to turn to... I think after that horrible video came out with the uh, kid from the Goldbergs, you know, with the singer in it, remember that horrible video (laughs) (laughs) that they deleted? After that, nobody wants to sign up for this. So they're scraping the barrel. Well, there are a couple of uh, positions here that's listed that that they have here. Uh, Cruise director is actually one of them. Cool. Seeking an effervescent actor with strong improvisational abilities to portray the Halcyon's cruise director. <laughs> she is a human, 30s, with the capacity to learn that life is about more than the fun of the moment and draws inspiration from the efforts she sees being made to bring harmony and justice to the galaxy. A born cruise director who loves yes. travel and adventure, she is a cheerful and harmonious people person. Ship mechanic is another one listed. Ooh, okay. Seeking a friendly and engaging actor with strong improvisational abilities to portray the mechanic. A youthful, late teens to 20s, human with big dreams, his enthusiasm sometimes outpaces his yes capabilities, (laughs) and as a result, he tries to present a braggadocious front (laughs) to match the vulnerability of being far from home. Mm. And then the other one I see here is... This is for actors with musical abilities. Galactic Superstar. So it says, Seeking an actor slash vocalist with strong improvisational abilities to portray our Galactic Superstar. And if you know, haven't figured it out, all of this needs improvisational abilities. I can't imagine why. Right. Sure, interacting with guests. Yeah. Character portrayed is a Twi'lek, 30s to 40s, who commands respect. Or is it Twi'lek? Is it Twi'lek? I think I said it right. I can't remember from the Star Wars universe if I'm pronouncing that right. Who commands respect and flame roses at her feet, operating in a legally dubious world of galactic intrigue while fighting for her race's integrity and freedom. She is also a phenomenally soulful singer who demands focus in every conversation and performance alike. Her vocal range is preferably that of a mezzo-soprano, and her musical style is a hybrid of neo-soul Jazzy funk colored by her extensive travel and experiences. So anybody out there that has those things. And you also have to have those things growing out of the top of your head. That uh, <laughs> probably like has this little. Right. So I don't know where they're going to find those. It's kind of hard to find these days. And also going along with the Galactic Star Cruiser <laughs> <laughs> news. Yeah. Is that it's been added to the bus directory. Yes. So... And so we have seen what has been added to the bus directory at Disney Springs. We know that for a fact. Looks like according to this picture that I have, it's number bus stop number 18, which I don't know where that is in Not comparison. Sure, it does say specifically resort guests only on this one. I wonder what they do. Like, how do they check that? And You're banned, I guess. Yeah, I well, what's, what's kind of weird to me is it's from Disney Springs. So they're not going to stop you from being, you know, if you don't want to be totally immersive, obviously. I don't think that the bus that comes to get you is going to be shaped like a ship or anything. Right. Like it's not going to look like a transport. Well, right? isn't that like if it's if you're too early or something, they take you there? Maybe that's what it is. Oh, so yeah, according to Disney, guests are encouraged to arrive between 1 and 4. What happens if you arrive early? It says Disney reportedly holds your luggage and then sends you to Disney Springs for the morning. Until your 1 p.m. embarkation time. So right. that's why they have the bus stop at Disney Springs. Okay. So they just send you off like, we're not ready for you. You can't hang out here. So you have to go to Disney Springs, spend some more money, and then we'll come back. Go to Chicken Guy <laughs> <laughs> before your space flight. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, and we didn't get to mention that they're going to have a fireworks show. A Bespin fireworks show. 
right. a virtual fireworks yes, show. Virtual oh, well, fireworks. Yes, exactly what it says. Virtual. The Halcyon Voyage will be able to view fireworks. And it's listed at 9.45 p.m. on day one of the voyage. I um, bet it's like the ones at the end of Return of the Jedi when they're all celebrating, you know, the fireworks that the apparently, what is it, like X-Wings shoot off or something? What was it, like cert, some ships fly by and like shoot off the fireworks? Yeah, I mean, I could see how they could make this immersive. I There's a part of me that feels like this is not going to pan out to be all that great, but hopefully I'm wrong. I mean, it's like watching it on TV, right? <laughs> Basically. That's kind of what I'm, you know, that's what we all think. is like you're watching fireworks on a screen. Part of the whole fireworks thing is, you know, being in person. That usually does help. This last part for the Galactic Star Cruiser, I feel like we've done a lot of Star Wars stuff in this, in this episode. Yeah. You know, because we're catching up in a way. Yeah. The transport shuttle. <laughs> right. Uh, docking bay. Yes, yes. It was, it was unveiled. Yes. <laughs> The flatbed with like a box on it, box truck. Yes, pretty much. As some of you may have seen, Universal took the opportunity to <laughs> to yes. poke at this. Poke fun, yes. As <laughs> they should. I think that's yeah, it's fair deserved. game. <laughs> yeah. Yes. A bus disguised as a space transport is pretty much what it's supposed to be. I'm gonna again. I'm I'm going to give this the benefit of the doubt and see to what degree this gets fixed up. Before yeah. it's all said and done. I'm going to have to see it. Right. I'm curious how they're going to make this feel like a shuttle is taking you down to a planet when you're on the, like, even if you were in an actual bus, how do they make this not feel or sound like you're in the back of a truck? You know what I mean? You know, that's a very good question, especially as loud as a truck can be. Yeah. Like, what do you, unless it's like an electric vehicle truck or something where it's super quiet maybe i guess it could be yeah it's possible and then maybe they have lots of sound effects but how do you not feel like or i'm just turning in a truck or a bus or something you know how like maybe they're gonna have some sort of motion simulator type apparatus on the back of this truck that can make you feel like you're actually descending or something versus just driving, you know, 100 yards to the back of Galaxy's Edge. Shuttle Tidarian, what is your cargo and destination? Parts and technical group for the Forest Moon. <laughs> Last points of the yes. Galactic going. Star Cruiser. <laughs> Lots of Star Cruiser news. Park passes oh. and Lightning Lane Experience redemptions are being distributed for guests staying at the initial one, at least anyway. As part of the experience, the excursion is going to be to Black Spire Outpost, so they're giving park passes to Hollywood Studios, of course, and they're getting experience redemption, as it's called, to Smuggler's Run and Rise of the Resistance. So they're basically getting Lightning Lane uh, price included, which, you know, is not really free. (laughs) That's what I'll say is price included, because you're already paying a good bit to experience the Galactic Star Cruiser as it is, so... Yeah. I would hope you would get passes to that. I hope it's not just this initial sailing because it makes it sound like it's just the initial uh, cruise. Really? So, uh, yeah. I would hope it's like every last one that they do. <laughs> yeah, it should be. <laughs> if it's supposed to be part of the experience, but... It better. Yeah. So. Did you see, though, the story about Josh Tomorrow did one of the tests? Oh, yes, yes. I haven't seen what, his, what he said. I haven't seen him say anything yet, but he was spotted in Hollywood Studios last week at Galaxy's Edge as he was participating in this, you know, maiden voyage or or, or, test voyage, what do you want to call it? So, yeah, he was spotted at, like, Docking Bay 7. He built a lightsaber at Sabi's workshop, but they also note that that's not included in your (laughs) cruise price. So you'd have to pay the extra 200 bucks. And he, he rode Rides of the Resistance. Anyway, so I guess he was doing the full experience as a guest would. Except for the buying a lightsaber. They don't have to do that. Yeah. I'm sure that they comped him on that, right? Yeah, I was going to say, not that he bought it, I don't think. but you know, I wonder if they gave DeMauro one of those trash bags to put his uh, lightsaber in. I think the sheaths are back. Uh, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. I checked. 
um, maybe they maybe they were just reserving the supply as much as they could for when the store cruiser opens. All right, and that's what it was. All right, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. but it, it could have been. All right, you know when you don't do news in a couple of weeks, it's kind of hard to say. Oh, they. Uh, the just as kind of just a note, but the park pass calendar has been shown to be available through 2024. So at this uh, point, it looks like it's going to be around for yes, you know, a couple of more years at least. Yeah, I know Chapek said it's here to stay, but I I don't know. I hate the park pass reservation. Yeah. I don't get why I don't get why it needs to be necessary going forward. Yeah, this as long as Chapek CEO, I think that's going to happen. At least for now. But why? I get why they did it for Control. limited capacity, right? Yes. But why, when you're not limiting capacity, <laughs> what's the point? Other than knowing where people are and trying to get them to go where they want, where you want them to go, I guess. There's that part. But, yeah. I mean, because it doesn't seem to be that availability isn't really that much of an issue now because they're just about pretty, pretty much opened it up, it seems like. <laughs> they haven't said, but it seems like they have. Like, it's always available. Uh, all parks pretty much, most of the time, are available. I don't say always. He's tightening his grip. That's what uh, JPEG's doing. Is that what doing. it is? Mm-hmm. The more you tighten your grip, the more star systems will slip through your fingers. Well, so far, nothing slipped through his fingers. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. But, yeah, and then, par- that, to me, this makes it sound like that the park hopping thing is it's never going to change either. Like, it's always going to be after two. Yeah, I really hate that because <laughs> I am I used to love the flexibility of, especially with an annual pass, being able to show up and, eh, I don't feel like dealing with the crowds here. Let me go somewhere else, you know. Right. And you can't do that. Yeah. Until 2 or 147 to be exact, you know. Or like, say, having the ability to, oh, I don't know, ride all the rides in one day, right. you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like they're specifically targeting the... <laughs> challenge people to like stop doing this well it makes it a real challenge when you if you keep it that way that's for sure that's true yeah (laughs) it makes it a near impossible yeah that's impossible (laughs) no (laughs) that's not true yeah well we're really quoting star wars today i know we're coming up with lots of them Mm. this is the special star wars this is a special edition (laughs) traveling with the mouse (sighs) Which um, means we have to redo an old episode because it's special edition. <laughs> yeah, right. And make yeah, it worse somehow. Improve. Yeah. <laughs> no, right. we'll have to make it worse. <laughs> improve the technology, but make it worse. I think that would probably, in some of our older episodes, that would be a challenge to make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could just play uh, static. Like, <laughs> <laughs> in some of them. It could always be worse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> could, could be worse. See, there's another one. You have to go to our website to hear like the really old ones because I think uh, the podcast feeds don't keep the most the oldest episodes. They kind of drop off, but our website has it. If you want to hear how bad the first, I don't know, twenty episodes are. You know, now that you say that, I'm kind of curious. I might want to go back and see what the oldest episode is like. The first episode would have been, what, July something of 2017, was it? Or was it 18? Let's see. The archives go all the way back to July 2017. Yeah, I was about to say. There you go. So it was right after D23 that year. But actually, the first episode was August. (laughs) August the 2nd. August August the 2nd. Okay. I knew it was right after D23 and whatever year it was. So, and well, it was 2017. I knew that because Livy had not been born yet. And hmm. Speaking of Star Wars, the topic of episode one of our show was us introducing ourselves, but the main topic was Galaxy's Edge. And I guess that was because of D23. And then the Star Wars Hotel, we said, was episode two's topic. Wow. So four and a half years ago, pretty much. Yeah, it was announced. We were talking about this stuff and still yet to really become a reality. It's about to be a reality. Yeah. it will be interesting to go back and listen to that and see what the heck we thought about it back then. Yeah, I'm sure we were more optimistic than we are now. (laughs) Oh, Um, five years ago. At that point in time. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, that that means that we're coming up on a fifth anniversary in about a few months. We need to... 
start planning something special if we can. A big <laughs> extravaganza. Yeah, for five years of traveling with the mouse. Yes. It's a lot of traveling. With the mouse. <laughs> We keep him with us. There's a mouse that we have. <laughs> He's our mascot. I actually had one of the Skyliner operator lines, the uh, Skyliner operators, I guess is what they're called, one of the cast members there, yeah. um, asked me that when I was wearing that shirt. She was like, where's your mouse? <laughs> and I didn't have a good answer or a clever, I didn't have a glib remark or a pithy no, comeback. Yeah. Not at the point. Any- Right. Anybody know that reference? Yeah, if you do, just like put it in the in, in the e- either an email or a comment or something. If you get any of our references, yeah, we quote a lot of movies, TV obscure shows, obscure stuff know, at times. Things, you know, some things are pretty obscure for for most, uh, I would think. Yeah. Anyway, any All other right. news? Should we wrap this up now? I, think I was about to say, I'm I'm trying to think if there was anything else to mention, but I think we've rambled on uh, long enough. The pond, I don't know, <laughs> in front of Phantasmic has been refilled. So oh, yes, that. yes, yes. So Phantasmic should be firing up soon. Yes. And did we talk about Festival of Fantasy? The day is so March 9th, I think, or 6th or 9th is coming okay. back. Festival cool. of Fantasy Parade. So they're actually going to have a full parade again. Ah, instead of cavalcades. That's actually one thing I kind of wish would have just, you know, stayed the same. Well, I mean, only of. because because I think the cavalcades, you know, were... I agree suited. to some extent. Yeah, they move through quickly. The crowd doesn't linger too long. Whereas the parade, people will line up for a long time before. And it right. blocks half the park and you can't get around if you're trying to avoid it. So, yeah. But then again, people lined up for these, so they were doing it more frequently, so it kind yeah, that's of true. clogged was, some things up anyway. You <laughs> had to get true. out of the way more often. That's true. So, yeah, maybe just having a one-time-a-day parade would, would be fine. I mean, at least I could walk in and maybe walk down Main Street without one starting. I mean, that's kind of how... I feel like every time I come in, there's there's one start that just <laughs> that's started. That's true. That is true. They were very often, so maybe this is better. Yeah. So test tracks closing early the last several days. That is kind of an inter- interesting I think it's going to close early for a couple of days or whatever it was that they had it scheduled. 3 consecutive days this week yeah. so far anyway it's closed yeah. early. Uh, I reason. don't know what that's about. Maybe they're needing to do it for maintenance. So what it, that's what I would think. Yeah, I mean typically with <laughs> test track anything is maintenance related. <laughs> Yes, for the last 20 years. <laughs> so, yeah, no, what I was thinking is it's approaching that time of year whenever we do March Madness, right, with uh, oh, yeah, something yeah, Disney-related. Yeah, so we need to discuss what we want to, what topic we want to do this year because we've done, like, like best thing, best attraction. Uh, what else did we do? I don't remember. We broke, <laughs> we broke it down. Uh, oh, we did um, the animated, or we did Pixar versus Walt Disney Animation, and then pick between them or something like that. Yeah, I think we did something. We like did that, that one. For you. Yeah. yeah, we did the movies. So, I mean, we need to come up with a topic now. If any of our listening audience wants to just throw an idea out there to use for um, the March Madness brackets, yeah. feel free to let us know yeah. because that is right around the corner. Yeah, that's a good question. We've done because I think. The best thing was what California Grill. I think we decided last yeah. year, and then the year before that, when we did attractions, yeah, attractions, it was right. Flight of Passage. Flight of Passage one, yeah. It's always interesting because we kind of like have our own choices, and then we reason this out, and then you, we're, we're kind of surprised sometimes by the outcome, <laughs> the way it all works out. So it's kind of interesting. Like it's not, I would, it's right. not the thing you would think it would be necessarily <laughs> when it's all said yeah. and done. I would say we could do resorts, but I don't know if there's enough of them. And then Jason would be very biased to Riviera, of course. So, Well, that's just one vote. That's so. true. He'd be outvoted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just what, what we could do is if we really wanted to mix it up and see if we want to do it, we could bring James into the mix again, and then it would really be interesting because there could be a lot of ties, possibly. <laughs> yeah, well, what would we do for we'll, a tiebreaker? Then what would we do, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. With three, it's, you know, it's either unanimous or it's, uh, you know, to edit. It's, there's always going to be 
when you're only given two there options. There can't be a tie, yeah. <laughs> there can't be a tie, yeah. yeah. So it works out. All right, so um, just give that some thought. Maybe we'll put it on like a Twitter poll or something like that as well. So. Yeah, well, we could come up with some ideas and then tweet yeah. the, whichever one's the best of the yeah. three or four we ideas could, we come up with. We could also put the poll on the website. We could do both. Yeah. That's not yeah. a bad idea. Kind of mix the results together. Where is our website? Should I mention that? <laughs> yeah. You might as well go right ahead. It is travelingwithamouse.com, so check that out. And our email address, if you want to email the suggestion to us, you can email us podcast at travelingwithamouse.com. And if you want to email our travel agent friend, you can tell her uh, what suggestion you have. Oh, and while you're at it, you could say, hey, help me plan my Disney World, Disneyland, cruise, or Universal trip for me. Her name is Jill Dilbeck, and her email address is jilldilbeck at gmail.com. And, of course, you can also get us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That is all at TWTM Podcast. We have a Spreadshirt store in which you can get your exclusive TWTM merchandise. That is shop.spreadshirt.com slash TWTM Podcast. And we have a YouTube channel, which I've been doing a little bit of work on videos lately, so you might see some new uh, footage, or sometimes it's old footage that I've just managed to get around uh, updated there or uploaded there as well. So, uh, for Adam, I have been your host this week. My name is John. This has been Traveling with a Mouse, and we hope we we hope to see you on our next trip. We look real good today. You haven't heard that song yet? I don't guess so. I saw it during the, one of the playoff games. It was playoff? an Apple commercial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>